it appears to be morning again. So today, there's a couple different projects I want to work on. First off, has to do with the blue van and the hand controls. Talk about that in a minute. Uh, second, remember that Volt Pro video that I did? Well, as it turns out, um, I think it kind of opened a can of worms with that one. So, someone commented and then someone else sent me a PDF of it. Actually, let me grab the thing real quick. Somewhere over in the UK or Scotland or wherever, Invicare has another charger that's the same. Through a little bit of research I was doing, trying to look up regulatory information with the CSA, which is who Permobile, or whoever manufactures that charger uses for their electrical safety ratings. Well, long story short, apparently the charger's built by Panasonic, or at least the electronic components inside of it that require a safety rating are built by Panasonic. So Invicare calls it the OptiCharge. Regardless, I have not been able to figure out the charging curves or anything like that. I've spoken with a couple people in the industry and they also don't know. So I got another one of these guys. Remember this? This is the battery monitor that I used on the Bounder. This thing has a cool little display and a DC Hall effect current sensor and it basically tells you voltage and amperage right there. Looks like it came with some more wires. But I've decided after doing all this research and hitting many dead, dead ends and walls and stuff. Now connected to Bluetooth. Okay. I'm going to do my own data logging. I'm going to build a little board that this thing is attached to and goes between the charger and the charging port on my chair. And we're going to go old school. I'm just going to point a camera at this thing and have a little clock next to it or stopwatch or maybe both and I'm gonna drain the batteries on this chair down fairly far and then we're gonna run a few cycles with this thing and in theory we should be able to tell or get a basic idea of what the charging algorithm is like on that charger so this is gonna take a little bit of time I'm not gonna complete this in this video but the thought is what I would like to do is see if I can get a hold of another set of the Volt Pro batteries and set this up on a test bench. Because it'd be a lot easier to connect a load to the batteries, run them down, and that, shut up. It'd be a lot easier to do all this on a bench. You know, attach a load, run them down, charge them, do several cycles. Because even though chargers are programmed to do a certain thing, under certain conditions, the voltages and whatnot may not be exactly accurate. Like, say, if I'm just guessing here, this thing is charging to 29.8 volts, it may actually go into absorption mode before or after that. So, so I'll have to say, it's going to take a number of charging cycles and data logging to figure this out. I was looking at, uh, so I've got, like, some little Bluetooth uh, import meters, but the way they export the data is... But the way they export the data is almost unusable. Why is everything talking to me? Stop. Cancel. Someone I know IRL mentioned this thing, and then someone else that I chat with quite a bit sent an email, and they were like, hey, just point a camera at it. It's a very good idea. That way I can just scrub through the recording, see the time, see the voltage, all that. So anyways, that's the plan with the Volt Pro stuff. We are still investigate invest investigating things but onto the project at hand which <laughs> this might be tricky today but okay title screen so with the van I'm realizing you got hand controls right push down for brake rotate for gas and then you've got a tri pin or some sort of spinner knob on your wheel so when you're driving, it takes both hands, right? Well, I had this happen the other day. And the problem here is that you don't have enough hands. If I need to go for the horn, I have to make a choice. I can either go for the horn and have brakes, 
or have steering, but not both. So my thought is, I'm gonna put a little button on the hand controls so I can just hit that and honk the horn. That way, I have the ability to stop and steer while I'm honking the horn. In this particular case, honking the horn made no difference because, I don't know, Portland and there you can do whatever you want when you drive. We'll just say I've seen people with flaming crystals at a stoplight right in front of a cop and nobody cares. <laughs> so anyways, I think having a horn on the hand controls is a good idea. If there wasn't, there was oncoming traffic in that clip, so I could have swerved out further. But uh, yeah, anyways, I, I don't think those people were coherent. After they pulled in behind me, they were kind of all over the place and stuff. So anyways, we're gonna hop into the van. I'm gonna try and find the schematics for the... Man. The brain fog is real today, but this is a simple task, I think. Not like physically, but mentally it shouldn't take much work. So we're gonna try and find the schematic for this van pull the horn wires out, and conveniently, my hand controls already have a button on them. When I bought them, I was kind of wondering, I don't know if that's for high beams or for horn, but yeah, we're gonna do that. All right, I'm gonna stop talking and get some more coffee in my system, pull up some schematics, and then we're gonna get that button installed in the van. Um, and yeah, I think if you have hand controls, you should do the same thing. Anyways, I'll be back. Well, uh, it's morning which is probably why there's broken eggs on the floor. It's a little bit too early for me to try and get down there and clean it up, but I've been trying to determine if it's getting away or not because the bus is parked on a hill and the front is further downhill. But it looks like to me that it is in fact attempting to escape. So I think just about all we can do here before I can get down on the floor in like an hour or however long that's going to be is just kind of do one of those. Uh, let's see here. I need a poking device. Yeah. Whatever. Okay, welcome back to the floor. We're in the uh, 2002 caravan here. And, um, well, let me just show you. Okay, so here we have the hand controls. This is gas, this is brake. However, this thing came with a random little switch that, uh, Let's see here. Yeah, it just goes to this wire that's cut right here. So what we want to do is connect this up to our horn circuit. Now through much searching on the internet, I came across some schematics that say a dark green, oh, now that the sun's out, I can see it. A dark green and violet wire comes out of the clock spring here. And in theory, this gets shorted to ground to honk the horn. Interesting note, there are a bunch of buttons up here for cruise control. There's only two other wires, so I'm assuming those are kind of like a multiplexed or voltage divider type thing to uh, make those work. So what I'm going to do is flay the insulation a little bit on this, connect up a jumper, and then hook up a meter. Then I'm going to honk the horn and uh, see if it connects to ground. The way most of these things work on vehicles is you have a single wire that comes up through the steering wheel, and this goes back to long before fuel injection and computers and vehicles and all that stuff. But basically a single wire comes up and then it shorts to the chassis or the metal work that's in the steering column and that's what activates the horn. Now in this case there's some computers and relays involved, but near as I can tell with the snippets of, snippets of schematics I've been able to find, it's still the same on this. So anyways, let's get this set up and test it. Okay, so here's the test setup. I've got this meter just hanging here for convenience. We've got a solid ground over here that's connected to one side of the meter. The other side is clamped on to that wire. I'm 99% sure that's the correct wire, and that's where we're going to attach our horn connection wire, so I don't mind cutting that. I can always just tape it up later. What should happen here is when I reach up and honk the horn button, this thing's gonna beep and or show some sort of continuity. All I care about is the beep. The horn is also going to honk, 
in theory, but uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so I couldn't tell if that did anything. Let me try, wait, is this thing on? Oh, it's not on the right mode. There we go. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, and the horn's stuck on. Okay. <laughs> I really don't know why Dodge feels the need to run everything through computers, but it's basically a signal cable, and with that connected through the meter, and there's a very, very small amount of current going through there, so with that connected to the meter, it made the horn stick on. Um, but regardless, that tells us we have the right wire now. All I need to do now is probably cut this here zip tie. And then we've got a wire coming from this switch, which is up underneath a cover here. Kind of goes up under there. So we'll just verify that this is a normally open circuit, which I'm pretty sure it should be. The sun is making this extremely difficult. I'm gonna grab some double conductor wire that I have, and then basically we're, actually, I was thinking we'd have to go all the way down through here and all the way back up, but since these parts move, I think it might be okay to just pop out of the cover and dangle it right back up here. That way it's not interfering with any moving parts. Huh. Well, anyways, I'm gonna play around with this. I'll be back. I've ever mentioned that trying to film while sitting on the floor of a vehicle is not very easy, especially when the sun is blasting in. Okay, so we're gonna create our own ground here and we're just gonna drill a tech screw through this bar right here. I've checked behind and there's no wires or anything. Uh, of course, I just realized the drill doesn't really fit in there. Um, mm, but over here, is there wires over here? Nope, okay. Uh, can I operate this drill left-handed? That's the question of the day. And deploy ground. All right. Ground has been deployed. Okay, working on getting the wiring set up here. I just realized a bunch of these panels and stuff have to go back in. So I'm just cutting some wires of certain length and then I'll figure out where to route them later. But for testing purposes, in theory, even with this unplugged, if we short this out, we should get horn. Maybe. Yep. All right, cool. Um, well, I'm gonna get all this plug back in, get some panels on, and then uh, figure out where to route all this stuff here. I've got this plastic thing back in here. I had to cut a bunch of this stuff when I put the hand controls in, otherwise there was no way to get it put back together. So this plastic piece underneath, I have stitched with zip ties. Um, and then same for this panel here, you can see a row of holes there, and then also on here. So, sticking with the, uh, you know, Dodge van theme, I guess, as it were. Um, lots of drift stitches everywhere. However, it looks like our wiring is going to pop out up here just fine. We've got our ground down here. It feeds up through. So, yeah, I can cut these pretty short, get some wiring loom material. I think we can just dangle it right here and it should be good. Eh, we'll see. Loosely getting everything put back together here. So this van is a salvage vehicle. When it was about four years old, um, it was an accident over here on this side and it was like a total loss or whatever, but it's been repaired and reconstructed. However, I say that to say, you come across interesting things on vehicles like this. So after pulling out the steering wheel covers on top and bottom here, I was noticing that uh, the back of the steering wheel isn't really attached. Then I got to looking down inside here and someone has attempted to super glue or some sort of glue or something. These little holes right here are actually part of plastic that's up inside here. I thought at first they were supposed to be screws because a lot of manufacturers use screws to hold this cover on. But of course Dodge in their infinite wisdom does, you know, all sorts of plasticky things. So this doesn't stay attached. And then I was noticing also that on this piece here, there are a lot of wear marks and on the top cover as well so you can see as the wheel's been turning that plastic piece is loose and it is just basically being held in place with this plastic here 
which is probably not the best thing. Anytime you've got parts that are interfering and rubbing when you're turning the steering wheel, it's probably not the best idea. So it does hold up in place and that stuff kind of holds it on there. But to me, in my mind, anything plastic that's rubbing on stuff that is two piece can get caught. So we are going to lean into the zip tie drift stitches even more. <laughs> I'm gonna drill a couple holes on each corner here and there's a metal bar that supports the area where the airbag is. So we're gonna put a couple of zip ties, well, one around each corner basically, to hold this thing up in place like that. Um, there's supposed to be screws up here. Oh wait, no, they're not. Ah, anyways, this is why I buy zip ties in bags of 1,000. Okay, um, that turned into a whole thing and my fingers will never be the same. We managed to get this mostly put back together though. And I've got all the zip ties threaded in here. Now, it's time for the satisfying part. Where's that ball head knob? There we go. Uh, come on, tripod, work with me. Okay, yeah, let's hold my leg up against this. Okay. Now it's time for the satisfying part where we <coughs> zip all the zip ties and also kind of hold things in alignment while we do it. Now this van, unlike other vehicles, um, well, normally this knee bolster plate back here is made out of metal in most vehicles. Thankfully in this one it is not because if that was the case, the way these hand controls had to be installed, there would be absolutely no way to get this cover back on here. But um, this is the one time I'll give Dodge a pass on using plastic for everything. Um, come on hands, you can do it. Three more. Come on. And, uh, okay. We have a thing. So, all that was done so we could get these two wires sticking out of here. And by the way, all this plastic is now as solid as it was from the factory. Uh, let's verify again here. Oh, why you no horn? Oh man, are you kidding? Wait, does the... Uh-oh, something's wrong. Wait, do I have to put the keys in for some reason? Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> I think what happened there is because computers and stuff, um, I've had the door open for a while, and after the vehicle's been sitting idle with the doors open, it shuts down a bunch of the power modules and stuff, so. All right, cool. The other thing too is the contacts in this horn switch up here were kind of gummy, which makes sense because this vehicle's 20 years old. Um, so yeah, moving it to this button over here I think should be good. Okay, I'm gonna chill here for a minute and ponder life. And once I'm rested, we'll connect these wires. That's all that's left to do. And then in theory, doing this should do this. Or something. Oakley dokley. I do believe we're done. Is it the prettiest install ever? No. Is this van a trailer queen? Also no. But we have a button right here now. If this, if the horn sticks on, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I've already covered everything back up, so let's see. Okay, that'll do. Ah, now, um, it's time to clean up, oh, lest you wonder what's going on, yes, I have a picture of myself on my key ring. I'm testing out the die sublimination stuff. 
and there's just some other random picture here on the back of some chairs. But I got my my die sub stuff working, and this is a test. I put it on my keys, and I'm running around to see how scratch resistant it is. As you can see, it's still perfectly shiny. So I think these things are going to work great. Um, and just because they came with it from China, I put the little tassel on there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so coming here very soon, we're going to have some merch, I think. I'll probably start with keychains and then go from there. So anyways, um, I'm going to pick up my tools. There's stuff everywhere. Okay, short of vacuuming in here and uh, finding that panel and reattaching it. I suppose I could wipe that down with a rag so it's not as dirty. Nah, whatever. Um, but short of all that, I think we're good to go. We uh, have everything put back together. Hand controls are good. And uh, I'll be able to honk my horn at people pressing this little button. I'm going to have to remember, though, that that's the horn now because it's just sort of like a fidget spinner type thing. When I'm driving around, I'll just press this button for no reason. Um, so yeah, I'll have to remember that. And uh, it does look like there's positions for more buttons maybe as well. So, or maybe those are bolt holes. I don't know. Whatever, I'm just happy to have this here now. Okay, life hack version 16.0. This particular place has a disabled parking spot with no loading zone next to it. As you can see here. So, I carry a cone. Not just any cone, though. It is one that has a wheelchair logo on it and says space needed for a lift. Because I've found if you just use a regular cone, people will move it out of the way. And I also kind of parked halfway in this space here. Um, the trick is, if anyone tries to move that, someone might see them move it, and then they'll look like a jerk to someone else because it has a wheelchair logo on it. So, works for me. Yeah, back out here again. I've gone through many iterations of cones trying to find something that works, but I have not had this one um, taken yet since I uh, started using it. I don't know how many cones I went through before, before I added the label. You get to, uh, whoop, have enough hands. But the trick is you have to play to people's sense of shame, which is getting more and more rare in the year 2022. But uh, yeah, anyways, I thought about making and selling those. As time goes on though, I'm thinking that those might be more and more useful. So I don't know, let me know what you think down below. Should I sell traffic cones that have, um, you know, wheelchair logos and stuff stenciled on them. I think they might be handy. Anyways, um, thank you for the memory for the editing computer person that sent this. We're going to go install it right now. All right, here we have 16 gigs of RAM. This is for the 2012 Mac Mini. Uh, what is this, 1600 DDR, something or other. Um, but yeah, that's the maximum that the Mac Mini will support. And here I have pulled it out from underneath the desk because I have this mounted on a piece of wood under this desk that is here in the bus. Figured that was the easiest way to deal with it. But it does get plenty of airflow down there. Yeah, I've got a bunch of these Simpson ties here wrapped with electrical tape for some cushioning. But uh, this thing basically just slots right in here. So I have modified this thing. As you can see, there's a few more holes drilled in the bottom than there would be normally because the exhaust comes out the back of these things and they just kind of expected the air to magically pull in around here. But yeah, drilling some holes made a huge difference in the thermals on this thing. But I've been using this computer now for, gosh, how long has it been? Probably going on three, two or three years, something like that. I was thinking about replacing the thermal paste in here, but that involves a lot more disassembly than I want to do right now. And I don't have my thermal paste. It's relatively clean in here though, no dust or anything. But 
memory is super easy. We've got two four gig sticks in here right now. And of course, cutting towards myself with a sharp twisting motion is what you're supposed to do, right? Compare here real quick. I'm pretty sure it's the same though. Yep, they are twins. There's one. Make sure that's seated in there. Looks like we're good. And there's two. All right, cool. And we are clicked back into place. All right, let's hook this up and uh, see if it renders video faster or not. And there we go. We have 16 gigs of RAM installed. Excellent. I'm going to do a test render here and uh, see if it improves our speed. I'm pretty sure it has to, though.